Move the motion. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Members in here will have heard me raise the issue of the establishment of a medical school in the North West before, and indeed it has been raised by others. For some of the longer serving members of the Assembly, the North West Medical School will have taken on almost mythical proportions as it has popped up, disappeared, and resurfaced again a number of times over a long number of years. But today, in proposing this motion, I am calling on the Executive to ensure that the medical school becomes a reality, that it does so soon and that it does not disappear again. I do believe, well, I certainly hope that I am pushing an open door here. The motion itself acknowledges the support for the proposals I have recently received from the Minister for Health and the Minister for the Economy, respectively. But please excuse my paranoia. We have been here before, hearing warm words but seeing no action. That is why it is imperative that this Assembly signals its support and the Executive signals its intent with a concrete commitment. Currently, Ulster University are trying to get this project off the ground, a project that will not only have a very positive impact on the delivery of health services in the North, but which will also be one element in the long overdue and much needed expansion of McGee. While it is early days in that process, I think they're currently at the first stage of eight with the General Medical Council, Ulster University are showing real ambition to deliver this for Derry, and that's not something anyone here in this assembly will have heard me say before. They want to get the doors open in September 2019, with the first graduates coming out in 2023. These efforts require, and indeed deserve, the full support of this assembly. And why wouldn't the executive do everything in its power to make this happen? It ticks so many boxes. It's actually hard to think of an initiative or an intervention from the executive that would be guaranteed to ensure as many positive outcomes for as relatively small a stake. The vision is the establishment of a graduate entry level medical school that will increase the number of skilled people here committed to careers in medicine and healthcare, bolstering an existing workforce that is spread too thin and worked too hard, particularly in rural areas. Every week we hear of the struggle to attract people to and retain them in various posts and the inevitable knock-on effect that this is having on patient care as waiting lists spiral out of control, regardless of how they are computed. Just this morning, again, we see another report on the A&E department at Altnagelvin and the difficulty that staff shortages are causing them and patients who attend there. This is in no way a criticism of our hard-working healthcare staff. They have been failed by poor workforce planning as much as patients have. Year after year, the Western Trust tops the chart when it comes to money spent on locums and agency staff due to fixed staff shortages, and locums are not low cost. Last year, the Trust spent over £11 million on medical locums and is on course, I believe, to exceed even that again this year. This is money that, had we got our workforce planning right, could be spent and would be spent on other services. A welcome boost for someone waiting on a new hip, for someone waiting on a mental health diagnosis, someone waiting for a gallbladder operation, or for a group providing vital services with no funding whatsoever. And this figure just relates to locums in the acute sector. It doesn't include money spent trying to plug holes in the great ship of general practice, the captains of which tell us is about to sink. Dramatically increased workload is one factor that has led to difficulty in recruiting and retaining GPs, and the demographic of those remaining means that urgent action is needed to ensure that numbers don't fall even further or we will see even more practices collapse. 
evidence suggests that workers are more likely to be retained close to where they are trained, the creation of this school will actually end up saving our health trust millions. And it isn't just going to benefit the Western Trust, but graduates from this medical school will be available to other trusts. There will be more people qualified to fill essential roles right across our health service. I think currently it's about 20% of newly qualified doctors that hop on a plane and end up working elsewhere. The beauty of a graduate entry level school is that this is statistically a lot less likely to happen. People starting and qualifying here are likely to be a wee bit older for a start, more likely to have commitments here, and less likely to fly off to find themselves and work elsewhere. It is envisaged that the school itself would have an enhanced or particular focus in the areas of primary care, general practice, and chronic disease management. And these areas will become increasingly important if we are to finally see our healthcare system transformed into one that copes with current demand and is equipped much better for the future. The new model for healthcare will require a much more interdisciplinary approach, closer working between doctors, allied health professionals and nurses, so ideally training in the future should be delivered as such. Therefore, I do question the logic of Ulster University in currently they are currently in the process of moving AHP courses like physiotherapy from their campus in Jordanstown to Coleraine, while there appears to be a genuine desire to get this medical school located and situated in Derry, surely shifting these courses to McGee now would be a much more sensible decision. It is essential that the school will have strong links with the community, again, even more so given Professor Bengoa's recommendations. Further scope for collaboration exists with the new radiotherapy unit at Altmagalvin, itself a powerful symbol of what can be achieved when we look beyond Belfast for solutions to our problems. The radiotherapy centre is also the product of north-south collaboration, and close working with the south can only add to what a new medical school has to offer. I believe that just today there are representatives from Ulster University meeting with counterparts from Galway discussing potential future opportunities for shared placements and teaching. Cooperation could also open up new opportunities in cross-border healthcare service provision, medical research and economic development. I referred earlier to ministers having previously stated their support for this project. And just last week, Derry City and Strabane District Council supported a motion from my party colleague, Tina Gardner, on this issue. There is also clear support from highly respected professional bodies. The BMA recognise the role that a medical school in the region, particularly one that specialises in GP training, will help to address the chronic shortage in the GP workforce in the area. Of course, also integral to this equation is the creation of more GP training places, and we welcome the Minister's announcement on this. The RCGP have also indicated, when I asked them recently at Health Committee, that this proposal is clearly a winner. Looking elsewhere, the establishment of new medical schools creates competition and drives up performance. This is very evident in Wales. I'm conscious that as my party's health spokesperson, I've spent all the speech so far focusing on the undoubted health-related benefits, but it would be remiss of me as a foil MLA not to touch on the huge economic benefits it would bring. It has long been accepted that the expansion of the university is key to the economic regeneration of the North West. What needs to be accepted by the executive is the need to do something about it. Supporting this motion Making this happen will be a clear step in the right direction. There is research that demonstrates that every one pound spent on a medical school generates eight pounds fifty in the wider economy, and Derry is a city in desperate need of a boost like that. The infrastructure windfall from the autumn statement, albeit smaller than we'd hoped for, 
could be used well, certainly the some of it, to conclude his for the infrastructure, infrastructural work at McGee, essential for its expansion. I propose the motion. I call Mr Gary Middleton. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I uh, welcome the opportunity to speak uh, on this motion uh, today. As a member of the Assembly for Foyle and as a uh, constituent who lives within the Western Trust area, I am all too aware of the specific uh, challenges that face our area, not only from a health perspective, but in terms of other perspectives as well. But if we look specifically at the health challenges, we know that from our regular briefings with the Western Trust that there are significant budget challenges uh, and difficulties in recruiting staff and retaining staff within the area as well. In March of this year, my colleague and the then Health Minister, Simon Hamilton, had an initial meeting with Professor Patrick Nixon from Ulster University to discuss the proposal um, to establish a graduate entry medical school in the Northwest. And at that time, the Minister said that medical locum costs within the Western Trust have trebled in the past three financial years and are projected at 12.5 million for 15 16. And of course, as a previous member has said, it's my understanding that the medical locum costs for the incoming year uh, are expected to reach uh, £16 million, pounds. and of course that itself is unsustainable. So these significant locum costs are as a direct result of being unable to recruit staff, unable to secure them within the Trust, but it's also having a wider impact in terms of the Western Trust and the deficit uh, which is uh, incurred and of course unable to spend that money that's been used in locums elsewhere uh, and in other priority areas. So a graduate entry medical school in the North West would go some way to addressing these challenges. And of course, research does show that where you do train and where you go and study in university, the likelihood is that you will stay there. The majority of people will stay and train and work in those areas. And that's what we want uh, to try and help address the issues uh, in the West. So when medical staff and doctors are trained, uh, we want them uh, to stay. That'll help address those uh, shortages which exist. Whilst the medical school itself will service a much wider area than my own constituency in Londonderry. I believe that Londonderry is suitably placed uh, with the newly opened radiotherapy centre, the innovation work ongoing with CTRIC, as well as the outstanding medical courses which already exist within the Ulster University at McGee. There are also very strong partnerships which already exist uh, with Alton Galvin Hospital, and of course that will bode well uh, for the future and any future medical school. Through our work on the Health Committee, we have heard from various organisations who fully support uh, this proposal. The GMC, the BMA and the Royal College of GPs have all voiced their support. Uh, and there is no doubt that, that uh, or this proposal will support uh, and, and help address their challenges and the shortfalls uh, and numbers of GPs and other challenges facing primary care as well. It is clear that both the Economy Minister and the Health Minister have already outlined their support and the benefits of this proposal, and I welcome the opportunity uh, we've heard from the SDLP and we'll hear, no doubt, from the Welsh Unionists uh, later as to their view uh, on the medical school. However, I was, uh, no surprise, slightly disappointed uh, this morning that the tone for this motion uh, was set out uh, in the media. Uh, the SDLP press office was extremely busy this morning in proposing and saying that uh, they propose a new medical school for, for McGee University. They even created a new hashtag, uh, constructive opposition. Uh, and as we've seen, um, I'm sorry, but this is a case of Johnny come lately uh, rather than constructive opposition. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The, uh, Johnny come lately, I noticed your, your, your Twitter account earlier, Mr. Middleton. Did, uh, does Mr. Middle not accept, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, that this is an issue that wasn't, uh, that wasn't uh, decided in the last number of months or weeks? This is an issue that people in Derry have been arguing about and arguing for long before he or I were involved in elected politics. Uh, yeah, and the I, member I has an extra minute. completely uh, agree with the member. Uh, and we have not said that we proposed this idea. This idea came from the Ulster University. Uh, for yourselves to suggest that it was the SDLP who proposed it, I think it's deeply unfair and quite sad uh, in, in reality. But uh, in, in terms of, of this motion, we, we, we will support the motion. Uh, we strongly believe in a, a graduate entry medical school. 
Uh, I look forward to hearing from other members, but the commitment that the executive, no doubt, will give is that they're um, focused on delivery rather than cheap uh, political point scoring and cheap headlines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Ms. Kiva Archibald. Can call you. Um, I'm pleased to contribute to the debate on the motion before us today, which I will be supporting. As the party, Sinn Féin have been to the fore of consistently promoting the expansion of Ulster University at McGee and the further and higher education offering in the North West in general. It's a region with huge potential, um, which we are seeing through developments at, currently taking place at McGee, at North West Regional College and also the Science Park. Um, a continued focus on development and investment is required to promote the genuine regional balance of our economy that we all want to see, education and skills obviously being a part of that, and delivering those locally is necessary. The medical school project would very much add to the offering in the North West and begin to tackle some of the issues in our health service, and it will be rehearsed in some of what has already been said. Week in and week out in our constituency offices, in our engagements with the Trust, in the media and here through questions to the Minister, we hear about long waiting times, staff shortages and difficulties recruiting staff to the health service. The Minister has outlined her commitment to the reconfiguration of the health service and this reconfiguration needs to be at all levels right from the start of the cycle and that begins with training of staff. As a representative of a constituency, partly in the Western Trust, I'm all too aware of how difficult it is to recruit staff and the disproportionate cost of locums in that trust, as Mr Durkin has already outlined. Spending on locums in the Western Trust doubled between 2011-2012 and 2015-2016. And there is evidence, obviously, that medical students and trainees are more likely to stay in the hospitals where they train, so having a medical school based in Derry will therefore have the knock-on effect of encouraging staff to take up positions in the locality and the surrounding trusts in the longer term. And obviously we do mean the longer term because we're talking several years by the time the project would be implemented and the first cohort of students would go through. And that's how the Minister's plans for reconfiguration of the health service must be viewed and must be allowed to have an implementation phase. This will be a process to address issues which have developed over decades and there's no overnight quick fixes. But it's a big picture view that we need to take. The Minister's plans regarding specialised centres will also begin to redress the imbalance in recruitment ability to some trusts, as it is likely that certain specialisms will be based in different regional hospitals, and those training in specialisms will therefore likely to be based in those hospitals in the longer term. And again, hypothetically, this will have the knock-on effect of retaining staff in the appropriate specialisms to these hospitals. Again, if we look at the Western Trust as an example of where specialisms are already located in, in Alton Galvin, in urology, radiotherapy and orthopaedics, but particularly in orthopaedics where there are specialisms within specialisms, there's a need for very targeted recruitment and the training of students in this location may help alleviate this alongside other measures. Likewise for GPs, as has been mentioned, there are also recognised issues and the Minister has already begun to tackle this by increasing GP training places for 2016-2017. Having a medical school in the North West would hopefully attract trainees to practices in that locality and then we'd have a better spread of trainees across the North. There has been huge investment in Alton Galvin over the past few years and the new radiotherapy unit as a cross-border service is a major development. This investment makes Alton Galvin a centre of excellence and therefore an ideal teaching location. The cross-border nature of the new radiotherapy centre is something which needs to be used as a model for future service delivery and we should be looking at attracting students from the entire west of the country and obviously further afield to a medical school there. The medical school, as Mr Durkin has said, has support of professional bodies and there does need to be collaboration with these to move the project forward. There should be further exploration of the cross-border potential of this project and of building on our structural infrastructure on an all-island basis in general as we plan for the future. The health service across the island faces great challenges and we're too small of an island not to be looking at how we can collaborate most effectively to let deliver for all our people. I call Mr Steve Aiken. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Speaker. I rise to support the motion of our fellow opposition party for the establishment of a graduate medical school in the west of the province. We believe that building on Northern Ireland's reputation for teaching medical excellence, as identified by Queen's University's position within the top 30 medical schools in the United Kingdom, will be beneficial for providing greater, greater training opportunities for medical students 
who will bring in a much needed boost in student revenues, as well as bringing strength and depth in our hospitals west of the ban. It would also be appropriate at this stage to also ask the Ministries of Health and Economy to conduct a detailed review in how the HSC, the universities, and our excellent life sciences sector, and I can't uh, be remiss of not to mention South Antrim in this context, can be brought together to maximise the teaching, research and manufacturing opportunities for all of Northern Ireland, for students, for patients and for our companies. However, and I must declare an interest here as an ex-CEO of a university fundraising organisation, that medical schools can be very expensive to set up, to establish their reputations and need to be properly resourced going forward. We as a party welcome the opportunity to improve the provision of university places in the North West. And speaking personally, I would be delighted to see McGee being expanded. And I would also like to see it being prioritised and that London, the A6 being prioritised to establish communication links to there and for Londonderry to become a global centre of educational excellence. But we also need to have the physical and educational infrastructure to make that work. So in supporting this motion, we look, forward discussion, we look forward to having discussions around increasing the opportunity for all medical training, medical teaching, research and manufacturing in Northern Ireland. And maybe by doing this and at the same time we can do something about our shocking waiting lists across the health service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Stephen Farry. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Lance Party can't support the motion before us today, but that's not without uh, some reservation and indeed uh, some points that we are going to highlight that the proposers do need to consider uh, and also some issues that they should uh, potentially clarify. We accept in principle uh, the need for a, a, a medical school uh, and it's in that context that we can support the motion. It is worth stressing, of course, that um, we are talking, or the recent talk has been around a graduate entry uh, school, which is a, of a different nature than a, a situation where we are talking in relation to undergraduates, and with a particular focus around GP training and primary care. Obviously, that is a particular pressure point within our health service, which we're all very much uh, aware of. And the solution in that regard lies in a number of, of interventions, including uh, how we can actually shift some of the workload off GPs in terms of other uh, aspects of our health service, where areas in particular where they have taken on additional responsibilities almost by uh, default or where we have, shall we say, unintended consequences. For example, the, 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 the free uh, prescriptions uh, which are universally available end up with more uh, prescribing being done as opposed to to people maybe talking to pharmacists. So there's a whole host of distortions in our health service which, which do pass on burdens to GPs. Uh, equally, we do need to look to the, the issue around how attractive certain specialities are versus others in the health service, and, and clearly then the, the number of, of places and in that regard. We do welcome what the Minister has been saying um, with, with regard to the need for more uh, places. And obviously it's in that context that we can look to the issue of what we can do with regard to an expansion in the North West. I was pleased that Mr Aiken did raise the issue of costs because I think it is uh, important that we have this debate um, in, a, in an air of uh, realism and that people do address the issue of cost. And hopefully the Minister will maybe give some indication of what her officials uh, estimate the cost of this uh, to be. And we need to look at issues around running costs, uh, what is going to be the capital costs, what is going to be the, the uh, location? Are we talking about locating this in terms of the particular uh, McGee campus as it currently stands, or whether we're looking to co-locate with Alton Gavin Hospital or somewhere else in terms of the wider uh, city, city of Derry? We also need to ask, is this something that the proposers are wanting to take forward on a standalone basis, um, where potentially it may be easier to fund, uh, or whether this is something that will be taken forward as part of the wider business case uh, for the, the expansion uh, of, of McGee? And in that regard, I should stress that uh, in my final week as Minister for Employment and Learning, uh, I received the final uh, version uh, of the business case, or hopefully what will be the final version of the business case, but I'm not entirely sure where that now lies in terms of the Department of the Economy and the Department of Finance in terms of, of, of processing, uh, never mind any form of decision making uh, by the executive and, and decisions in terms of, of, of funding. The, the wider context as well is that we, we do need to look to uh, what is happening in terms of higher education and the potential expansion uh, of, of the sector. 
Like I clearly state that I do want to see the expansion of the university uh, at McGee. I fully understand the, and appreciate the relevance to the city, the hurt that's been uh, felt over 50 years in terms of decisions that were, were taken, um, quite uh, an error in, in my opinion, and the, the, the potential now for the transformation of the city for that investment, that, that is all taken as read. But we also have to appreciate that the, the expansion of McGee was not a formal commitment in the previous uh, programme for government, so people think it was, it wasn't. Um, but we did, during the last mandate, manage to expand McGee by several hundred places, about 650 uh, to be accurate, and we have commenced the construction of the new £10 million uh, teaching block. This remains a long way short of the 10,000 additional places that people are looking for in terms of the one plan and more recently the, the strategy group uh, under the, the, the City Council in partnership uh, with, with the University. But we have to be realistic here. Uh, before we can talk about expanding our higher education sector, and I appreciate that medical school funding may be an issue for the Department of Health uh, in isolation of some of the wider issues. But we have to recognise that we currently have a £55 million deficit in terms of higher education. So before we can talk about expansion, we need to fix the hole. First, we need to make sure the foundations are solid. Whenever we published the big conversation paper uh, in March of this year, we did talk about not just addressing uh, the funding shortfall, but also looking to expand uh, the, the number of places available in Northern Ireland in line with the needs of, uh, identified within the skills barometer. And obviously, McGee uh, can capture uh, some of that. But also, more and more capital investment will be required to make this a reality. The costs are significant. To his remarks. About 40 million pounds, between 30 and 40 million pounds per year in running costs, and potentially several hundred million pounds of capital. So it's important that members are aware of that in terms of the full aspirations for expansion of the university in the northwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I rise to support the motion. Um, I find it difficult maybe following from my, uh, my colleague who actually is in the Northwest constituency, and I think he's covered the points reasonably well in relation to that. However, I mean, if I look at the motion again, Chairman, uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, I want to look about the notes of support. And I mean, the SDLP in their uh, opening remarks talked about this. This issue has been about for a number of years. I suppose, and I want to put in the record, I actually note that this wasn't down in an opposition debate because it probably was an embarrassment for them with their opposition partners. Um, actually not bringing this forward whenever they held the portfolio for health. And maybe that's why. I mean, I'm happy to take an intervention if they want to clarify that that's why it wasn't tabled on an opposition day. But, Mr. Speaker, that aside, I think it's right, it's just in terms of the people in the North West in relation to having the services there. I think, as my colleague has already outlined, I think it's well known that if people are educated in the area, they're more likely to stay. And I think we're all too aware of the issues that we have within the health and that's not diminishing the difficulties the Minister faces in the years ahead in relation to addressing that. And that's addressing something that has been a legacy issue, and it's not something that's going to be done overnight. But I mean, I think if uh, the will has been there, the suggestion that even uh, my colleague has said in reference to the Economy Minister and indeed uh, comments previously from the current Health Minister in relation to these places within the North West. And I think we all agree that that would go some way uh, in, in supporting that. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, I have nothing more to say than that, other than the fact that I actually welcome the motion and support the motion today. Call Ms. Michaela Boyle. Good uh, day, Principal Speaker. Um, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion here this morning. But firstly, I want to take the opportunity to congratulate all those involved in the new £50 million uh, pound radiotherapy centre in the Western Trust uh, as it opens its doors to the public for the first phase. Uh, this unique cross-border centre of uh, excellence will provide for much-needed cancer care for many people across these islands, with a complement of over 200 staff across a range of specialisms and expertise. This is just one example of what can be achieved when we put the shoulder to the wheel with both governments on this island working collaboratively and, indeed, people not using this project as a party political football. The proposals to establish a graduate entry medical school in the North West is, as has well been said, at a very early stage, but we need to build upon existing support that is already out there for the school to be built west of the band. The University of Ulster McGee and Alton Galvin uh, Area Hospital already are leading the way as centres of excellence for medical research and education, and we do need to build on this. We are very aware of how much the Western Health Care Trust spend on medical locums to cover the North West, and the Western Trust has a biggest spend on locums. 
partly given the geographical uh, location uh, and for travel accommodation, but we continue to be the biggest losers in this regard. There are difficulties and pressures on attracting and retaining GPs and consultants in the, the North West. There's no denying that. There has been a revised induction and refresher scheme for GPs that are not currently practicing in the North of Ireland to return to practice here. I welcome this approach and it does go some way in addressing the gaps that we have here. And I'd be keen to hear from the Minister later on how this is progressing. However, Principal Speaker, the establishment of a medical school in Derry will provide and attract many uh, young students from here uh, across these islands and further afield. Having our own homegrown young people training here on our own doorstep can be justified if we do look at the stats and the data out there provided by the BMA. Uh, when Dr. Tom Black came to the Health Committee uh, back in October, he stated that we have over 1,200 GPs with 950 whole-time equivalent GPs delivering a service. And the figure of 950 whole-time GPs is a lot fewer per head of the population than the 1950s. And he said this is an extraordinary assertion because the demand for GPs is rising as people are living longer. And we do have a successful health service. However, success creates more demand, and we feel that more in the Western Trust than any other trust area. We need to be bringing forward incentives for GPs and, and others to live and work here. I, I too listened earlier uh, to um, Mr Durkin on the radio, and he stated that this would be a game changer for the North West. I do agree with him but he said it would be for the city. And I think he has to think methodically. This goes beyond the city of Derry. Uh, it, it, works for, it will work for the people of Coleraine, Limavady, and indeed my own area of Straban. But of course, this is not just about GPs, as was mentioned earlier. We also need more allied health professionals to work alongside our GPs, as not everyone going into a GP practice needs to see a GP. Uh, they need physios, nurses, chiropodists, podiatrists, and all of these people play uh, an important role in primary care in helping to reduce the numbers and pressures on a GP. I welcome the work that is done to date by our Minister and the significant challenges that lie ahead for her and her department on the transformation of services. The Minister is all too aware of the problems and challenges that we have west of the band, and I know she is committed to tackling these problems. As I said, proposals are at an earlier stage for the Graduate Entry Medical School, but I would urge the Minister and her department to bring forward the business case as, uh, as soon as possible to support the motion today. Gorm Algeth. Call Mr Tom Buchanan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on this debate uh, this, this um, afternoon. But the concept of a medical school in the North West, based at the University of the campus site at McGee College, Londonderry, is something that has been in the melting pot for some considerable time. It's not something that, is just a, 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 that the SDLP has dreamed up and has put out today that is their proposal. This is something that has been there for some considerable time. For, for example, over the past few mandates of this Assembly, this issue has been brought to the fore on numerous occasions through written questions private members' motions and, indeed, in the, re in the um, respective committees where the university has put forward their proposals, certainly. Uh, thank, can I thank the, the, the member for giving away. Just, does he agree, then, with us that, that this is an issue that has been around for a long time and needs resolved, or does he agree with his colleague, Mr Middleton, that this was a proposal by his own by your own party colleague last March, I think it was, Mr. Middleton, was it? The no, member has the, the, an extra minute. Thank you. This is a proposal that has been put forward by the University of Ulster themselves, not by no, partic uh, by no individual or no particular party. It's from the University of Ulster themselves. So for the SDLP to come out this morning and say it's their pro proposal, it's misleading to say the least. That's exactly what it is. It was. And, and to, to reinforce what my colleague said earlier, back on the 24th of March of this year, my colleague, the then Health Minister Simon, Hamil Simon Hamilton, kick-started this process again when he met with the University of Ulster's Vice-Chancellor, Professor Patrick Nixon, 
to discuss the proposals for the establishing of a graduate entry medical school in the North West, which I have no doubt has the support of all the people around the chamber today. However, moving forward with the development of these proposals and making them a re reality is essential for the stabilising of our health and social care services, not only in the North West, but in the entire South West quarter of Northern Ireland. With the Western Health and Social Care Trust under severe pressure for its dependence on medical and dental locums uh, at an unsustainable cost of £12.9 million to meet their demand, the development of the proposed new medical school would help address this ongoing issue while reducing the cost of locums. While the Western Health and Social Care Trust have faced many difficulties in seeking to recruit medical staff west of the ban, it has been proven, and this has been already said today, that medical graduates are more likely to seek employment closest to where they are educated. The de development of this medical school would provide that platform, which would attract and retain skilled people into the medical profession, especially from the entire north and southwest quarter of Northern Ireland. This, in turn, is not only good for the university and for the Western Health and Social Trust, but for our economy, for the skills development and for the overall health and well-being uh, of our citizens. With the Ulster University and the Western Trust both having, having been recognised as centres of excellence, we must continue to build on this success and turn the west of the band into a, med into a magnet for medical students, doctors and staff to study, to work and uh, to live. Looking across the entire Western Health and Social Trust area, with Anthony Galvin uh, and its new cancer centre, the new South West Acute Hospital in Enniskillen, and the new local enhanced hospital Noma, I believe that we have the platform and the structure of excellence in place to attract highly skilled professionals in medical field to both train and to work in this area. The new South West uh, acute hospital in Enniskillen is one of the most modern and finest hospitals in Northern Ireland and the envy uh, of many other areas, but it must be properly sta staffed with sufficient medical professionals to allow it to deliver to its full potential for all of its patients. Uh, the medical school, I believe, will improve uh, the retention and the recruitment of medical professionals, not only for the North West, but for the entire southwest quarter uh, of Northern Ireland and for that entire region, taking in the triangle model for the delivery of health uh, by the Western Trust, which takes in and includes the, Ant the Anthony Galvin, the Southwest Hospital in Enniskillen, and the new uh, hospital in Oma. So it's not only a matter that it's going to be something that will deliver for the North West, as we've heard today, I believe is something that will deliver for the entire South West quarter of Northern Ireland, where the Trust do have those same difficulties in seeking to bring in the medical professionals to uh, work in the area. Looking forward, uh, we look forward to further discussions on the, on the course of making the university's proposals a reality within this area for the uh, entire development of health professionals in the, um, in the trust area and for the uh, good of the people, the economy and uh, health delivery within the whole uh, Western Health and Social Care Trust area. I call Ms Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak in support of this motion as Zulz Genius Party Health Spokesperson. This is an important issue as educating sufficient numbers of doctors is absolutely essential in ensuring enough are locally entering their profession. It is widely recognised that our health service workforce is not in a good or sustainable shape. In fact, there has been a total absence of workforce planning in Northern Ireland, and now this is directly contributing to many of the pressures currently being experienced. I'm sure there are many members in this House who are acutely aware of the scale of vacancies across the local health and social care trusts. I've said it before and I will say it again, a long-term vacant post, whether it's for a doctor, nurse or allied health professional, is about as much use as no post at all. 
For instance, the Department and successive ministers have regularly gone to great efforts to boast of the number of new nursing posts that were created, but would be loath to tell us that there are 920 posts currently vacant. So before we even consider today's issue of a new medical school in the North West, the Department needs to be a bit more transparent in terms of telling us what, what exactly their workforce needs are. That needs to include what demands there would be for recruitment from a large number of medical school graduates through, for example, McGee, if it was indeed the case. For instance, I know from talking to my colleague Rosemary Barton, MLA, there are chronic medical staff shortages in much of the Western Health and Social Care Trust. The pressures are particularly acute in general practice with the frightening amount of County Fermanagh on the brink of having no GP cover at all. And it would be remiss of me at this stage also not to mention the particular situation in Portadown. And indeed, Minister, you will be aware that we did receive further contact from a GP this morning. There is a very serious scenario unfolding there with regards to a large number of doctors leaving in very quick order. And this has left some of the practices there looking over a precipice. Um, already I'm aware that people are talking about managed dispersal, something that is probably as impersonal and clinically cold in reality as it sounds. So, Minister, I'd be happy to facilitate a meeting between you and yourself and local GPs in the town if you'd agree to meet with them. That, Mr Speaker, is indicative of what happens when we don't properly workforce plan. So, today's debate could possibly go, go some way towards fulfilling a need. However, increasing a number of medical school places, whether through a new school in McGee or anywhere else, would do absolutely nothing to soothe the current pressures unless it is accompanied directly with an increase in the number of medical training places. And that's the crux of the issue. It doesn't matter how many people we educated through the universities, it all comes down to how many fully qualified doctors a new school at McGee could actually help to deliver. Of course, with Alton Galvin, the school would have a perfectly reasonable training ground on its doorstep. But I would suggest the two departments, the University of Ulster, in their early assessments of whether school would, even, would be viable, should be ambitious on how they could deliver these training places. For instance, how could the South West Acute Hospital, a facility which has some problems of recruiting and retraining sufficient number of doctors, link formally with it to ensure that doctors are more proactively being sent to train and hopefully settle in areas where a real demand exists. That is just one option, but I'm, I'm sure there's many more. So I will conclude by wishing the Minister well with their future engagement with the Ulster University on this issue. Call Mr Raymond McCartney. Mr. Uh, Kilmacoller, uh, I, I rise to support them, uh, the motion. And indeed, I think, I think we all welcome the fact that they're right across the Assembly this morning, everybody is in support of the motion. I think notwithstanding that there are some issues about who, who was the first uh, to actually propose this, and, and I was sort of struck by the phrase that they say success as many mothers and fathers, and mm -hmm. by the end of this, the, the, the day we might need an, ex, an expansion of the maternity ward, not the Gavin Hospital, for the cater for everybody who is going to claim success. But you know, that aside, I think it's, it, it's, it's fair to say that over you know, a long number of years, uh, the expansion of, of the campus at McGee has been very much part of the politics mm -hmm. of the, the North West. Uh, indeed, Stephen Farry, in, in fairness, when he uh, was speaking, talked about it. So I think we all know the, the need for that, the expansion, not just in terms of the number of courses and the students, and we see how it will add not just the, the, the strength of the university, but wider. And obviously, that's placed in conjunction with the, the development of the A5 and the A6 and all our aspects. Because for us, it, it's a, it is about trying to uh, address decades of uneven development. And I, I acknowledge the fact that even Steve Egan, when he was speaking, acknowledged the need for the, the development of the A6. So I think as, as representatives, for FOIL, indeed for the, for the North West. It's good to see that, that people are starting to see this and starting to support it, and hopefully we we'll see some movement forward. I think it's to be acknowledged that both the, the Minister of the Economy and the Minister of Health, who's obviously a party colleague but here today, have also expressed their support 
for the, for the medical school, because I think he can place the, the medical school in, in terms of, of, of that wider context. But as, as an idea in its own right, it has its own strengths, and therefore, uh, on that alone, I, I think that the, the Austria University have approached this in the right manner. They see it as a project which will have to go to the sort of subject of the rigor of business cases, etc., etc. And I think the approach which they have taken, and in particular the, the appointment of a full-time senior person within the university through Professor Hugh McKenna to take it forward, I think is a good signal of their intent. They're not going to leave any gaps. Uh, this isn't just some sort of concept which, in many regards, uh, is perhaps easy just to say we need a medical school, but they're certainly going to ensure that they have a very rigorous case, one we are presented, and indeed, uh, as a party, we have met and had the presentation from the university and last Friday at the, the Unity of Purpose meeting, Gary Middleton and Mark H. Durkin also got the, a, a version of that presentation from Hugh McKenna. So I think the intentions and the desire, but also the solidity of the case has been, has been well made. I, I think the, sort of, the, the innovation around this uh, is the idea that it's going to be a postgraduate uh, entry and the, the university in presenting that give all the pluses around that. And, and one of the things, particularly a postgraduate entry in medical schools, indeed in other <coughs> uh, courses and experiences elsewhere, and the, the university said this very, very clearly, that idea of what they call the 2020 sort of rule, where people who are educated stay within 20 miles of, of where they're educated for 20 years. And I think that's the big plus in relation to this, because, and then if you like to add to that case, and people here have already alluded to it, the fact that we have in the Western Trust a large bill, a bill which they predict uh, has the potential to grow around locums. So with the, the, the focus and the emphasis being put on GPs, then we can see how the business case, in my, in my opinion, will be improved by the fact that you have a postgraduate entry, uh, a focus on uh, general practice and then fill in that particular gap. And I think that's how, how we should go forward uh, with this. And the other, the other emphasis, I think, has to be put in this is then it sends that sort of signal that with the right case, it well presented uh, with the, the university. And I think we have seen uh, in recent times a, a change in the, the direction and the leadership of the university. I think the university themselves for the first time are starting to realise, and Stephen Farry alluded to some of the problems in the past around this, but I think it's important that the university sends out the right, the right signal that when they, along with the rest of us, talk about the expansion of the university, and when they talk about the need for a medical school and the desire for a medical school, that they present it in such a way that the case will be made, there will be no gaps, no holes, and I think that's why it's important, and I, I welcome the tone Member of, of the motion and, and, and the, the, the widespread support, give or take who was the first to say it. Now I'll say it. I oh, think Mr. Sinn Féin Jerry was the first to say it. Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome this uh, opportunity as well to participate in today's debate. Uh, and can I say at the outset that I think the focus of this debate today should be on the best outcomes that we can achieve for our long suffering uh, constituents? rather than getting into party politics uh, in terms of disingenuous remarks towards speakers taking part in this debate. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me not to, uh, in the context of today's debate, not to give appreciation to the many health service staff who are really doing a tremendous job uh, in some of the most difficult and intolerable situations. It's no easy feat for them, and it's incumbent on this Assembly that we do all we can to alleviate the pressures that they are currently facing. In today's Irish news, it's very concerning to read of an RQIA report into Elton Galvin Hospital, which states that staff morale is low, that they do not feel supported and valued. And Mr. Speaker, this cannot continue. The current pressures cannot continue, and this Assembly really does need to act, and I would hope that training more staff could go some way in alleviating uh, those pressures that staff are currently facing. In the Western Trust over recent years, we've had many great developments, such as the building of the South West Acute Hospital in Fermanagh. There is a new Tyrone and Fermanagh Hospital in Oma. 
the Grancher site in Derry has been substantially redeveloped. And in recent days, as other members have alluded to, we have the opening of the new radiotherapy unit at Alton Galvin. All of these, Mr. Speaker, are positive developments and evidence of progress. Mr. Speaker, progress that could and must be supported by the establishment of a dedicated medical school for the North West. And in this context, I welcome the proposal put forward by the Ulster University for the re-establishment or for the establishment of a medical school in the North West that would focus on graduates and on GP training places. However, I do think, Mr. Speaker, that in order to permanently reduce vacancy rates within the, the trust area, we do need to set our sights higher as there exists the possibility of training undergraduate medical students in the future by utilising the Alton Galvin and South West Hospital sites. It's my belief that if we are to accommodate future demand for services which are currently struggling not only in the Western Trust but throughout the North, we do need to set our ambitions high. The Western Trust, Mr. Speaker, has suffered for many years in terms of attracting staff, whether that be doctors, nurses, midwives or otherwise, which has resulted in significant gaps in the current trust workforce. Many of our rural GP practices are facing extinction due to a chronic lack of available doctors and an ageing workforce, all of which has and will continue to impact on patient care and patient outcome in many communities. Waiting lists for GPs are growing, and we've already witnessed the gradual erosion of rural out of hours services in the West. I would hope that the establishment of a dedicated medical school would go some way in alleviating these pressures and that it would also improve patient outcomes as a result. Mr. Speaker, these issues remain concerning, and I, like the SDLP, believe that much more can be gained in terms of medical staff recruitment if we have a standalone medical school for the North West and indeed for the whole of the North. In terms of looking at the potential for a new medical school, we need to look at costs as we are facing substantial pressures on the health service due to a failure of various reform initiatives such as transforming your care. In the last five years, Mr. Speaker, the Western Trust has spent an unprecedented £54 million on locum and agency staff and that's not to mention current expenditure on banking staff. Only Belfast, Mr. Speaker, which has a higher population density, has spent more on temporary staffing than the Western Trust, which is hugely concerning. The question has to be asked whether, under the current financial arrangements, trusts are happier to employ staff on a temporary basis rather than to commit to full-time staff. I would welcome the Minister's views on this issue and whether she believes that the current financial arrangements and block grant funding within the health service is adding to the growing bills for temporary staff. I urge support for the motion, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Call Ms. Paula Bradshaw. Mr. Speaker, um, and thank you to the SLP for bringing forward this motion today. Um, as my colleague Stephen Farry has said, that we, we won't be opposing the motion as we see no harm in investigating the potential for the medical school in, in the Northwest. And I just would like to put on record our, um, how we concur with what's been said here today in terms of the crisis within the GP sector, not least in the West and Northwest of the province. However, we do want to put on record some of our concerns about the proposal. It is, of course, very easy to present an idea like this to the Assembly, but once the idea is costed and detailed, sometimes the case for it ceases to be as clear-cut. It is, of course, one thing to support the establishment of the medical school in principle, but it is another to support it once the full business case has been explored. Um, it's, one, it's unclear what precisely the proposal is. There is reference in the motion to the expansion of McGee, which, does not include, which, which includes the postgraduate school for GPs. There's also reference to a medical school, i.e. a replication of what already exists at Queen's, and this is quite a different thing. In other words, there is merit in the proposal for medical training at McGee, but what we would want to hear from parties presenting the, the, such motions is not just why the project is on the, their wish list, but how exactly it is going to be de delivered in terms of how it will be funded. For an overall medical school, it would not be feasible. Funding is not, of course, the only issue. There are 34 medical schools in the UK. On average, this means there should be a precisely one in Northern Ireland, which is exactly what we have. 
So we need to be clear, even with the proposed rise in the number of, of GPs to be trained, there's not enough to justify a second general medical school in Northern Ireland. In fact, for a medical school in the North West to be justified, places would have to be taken from the existing school at Queen's. Maybe res representatives in the North West would support this, but I wonder whether the MP for the South Belfast constituency in which Queen's is situated would be quite so delighted. We also have to consider, just consider whether this proposal really fits with the thrust of the ongoing transformation process to which I understand the proposers have pledged support. This includes regionalisation and thus centralisation of specialised services and many would see medical training as a specialised service and thus by splitting it would, be, would run directly contrary to what is being proposed here. The whole idea is to place all the available expertise at a single accessible site. Already I wonder if we are beginning to see some parties being tempted by putting local interests first, and I would want to hear some clarity on this if this is not the case. In fact, this strikes me as a much longer term project than the proposers are indicating, and interestingly it is perhaps one with a cross-border dimension. Is there in fact a long-term case for a medical school of the west of Ireland with GP training at McGee but other courses elsewhere? Such a course perhaps in some cases sharing expertise and facilities may be much more financially viable and could in fact contribute to the expansion at McGee. However, it is a complex, complex project requiring greater cross-border agreement on regulations and qualifications than is currently in place. We should not deny, however, that this would take some time. As I explained, I do not wish to suggest that such a proposal is not possible, and I hope I have shown that we could and should be looking at an alternative means for achieving it. I am in no means anti-North West, having lived in Eglinton and the outskirts of Derry for many years myself, so I understand the difficulties and the prejudice and, and disadvantage that people in that area have felt for many years. However, I do not think that we should pretend that this is likely in the short term. It is one thing to support something in principle, quite another to, to deliver on it with, with purse strings are already stretched by the need to invest in reform, while service, funding services in urgent need, such as tackling waiting lists, are also crying out for much intervention. Perhaps let us see a detailed business case for a cross-border school as part of the overall transformation process with a focus on the best possible outcomes for both the patient and medic. Thank you. I call Mr Raymond McCann. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, it, uh, there's been, as has been uh, mentioned, there are no shortage of candidates for, to, have been the, to have been the first person ever to come up with this idea. Well, I can only say, hey, it wasn't I who was the first person, for a start, or any party associated with me. I can say that the first time I ever heard the idea of a medical school at McGee mentioned was by somebody who's not a political uh, associate or friend of mine, by John Hume, many, many, at least 25 years ago. Others may have followed on, or maybe there was somebody before 25 years ago that I don't know about. But uh, John Hume of the SDLP was the first person who ever brought it up in my presence. Uh, so they, they, and that was a long time ago, but not as long as I have been on the road in relation to the university uh, issue, uh, Mr. Speaker. I was 20 when the University for Derry campaign was founded. I was outside this building, sort of a wide range of people from Derry and the wider Northwest at that time, looking uh, for a university. And here we are once again. Here we go again. So in many ways, I'm not saying we're back at the beginning. I unequivocally welcome, welcome the idea which has been uh, pledged of a medical school or a postgraduate medical school uh, at McGee. I want to put that on record lest anybody say I'm being begrudging and not welcoming uh, I of it. I accept the good intentions of everybody. But even on the university's own figures, and the figures we're talking about here, the figures are that there would be 500 extra places sort of at McGee that are, if these, this promised project goes forward. Now, 500 extra places is absolutely to be welcomed. But it's a long way short of the university of 10,000 students, which we repeatedly were promised, both by, in this place, by the university itself. If that's gone, if that uh, a target has been abandoned, and it's not mentioned here hardly at all as a target, if that has been abandoned, then let people stand up and tell us, you know, sort of we can't uh, uh, deliver what we promised. Uh, as a man. At the moment, 
those pledges are there on the table. They're still there for a, a student body 10,000 strong. We're far, far away from that. In the last five years, McGee has lost courses in arts, computers and engineering, life and health sciences have been closed entirely, and most ominous of all, INCOR, a world leader acknowledged everywhere in conflict res resolution, I mean, has been unceremoniously shifted to Belfast by way of the maze. It was moved out of Derry, the idea being that it would be relocated as a peace centre sort of, uh, uh, at the maze site. When that didn't work out, it was shifted into Belfast. Well, it's as simple as this, Mr. Speaker. We want it back. It should be in McGee. Where better for a conflict resolution uh, institution than in McGee? Where better for an expanding centre of culture generally? Sort of that in Derry, sort of Anna McGee. And it just, like, just jotted down a few of the names that sort of came to mind. When we look at the cultural richness of Derry, which should surround any university, it shouldn't sort of be isolated away sort of from the cultural life of the community. Derry is the home of Column Kill, of Dockerell, of Amelia Earhart, of Seamus Heaney, of Seamus Dean, of Jennifer Johnson, Gay McIntyre, Brian Freel, Joseph Locke, John O'Neill, Souk, Johanna Fagan, Dame Cecil Alexander. Dave Duggan, Felicity McCall, Ali, Abby Oliveira, sort of the uh, Turner nominated, Willie Doherty. Those are just the ones that came to my mind, sort of as I sat here. Sorry? Certainly. Go on, Danny. Remember, except that most of those illustrious people that he's named are now dead. Uh, Remember, well, well actually, quite a it? number of them are not dead. Sort of, and how dare you bury them before their time, uh, Mr. Kennedy? I hope it's not to do with the fact that they're associated with my hometown. It's lazy to try to get rid of them. Uh, Gay McIntyre uh, uh, isn't dead. Seamus Dean isn't dead. Uh, jo jo uh, John O'Neill isn't dead. Soak Brady Mons Watson isn't dead. Johanna Fagan isn't dead. Dave Duggan isn't dead. Abby Oliveira isn't dead. Willie Doherty lives round the corner from me. One of the most idolic sculptures on these uh, islands. Willie Doherty's certainly not dead. In fact, he wasn't dead the night before last. I can tell you. you know, uh, to all those people. So what I'm saying really is that a university with 10,000 students would be very happy in Derry. The people who would come in, there'd be a thousand jobs at least, good jobs by our standards, that would come to Derry as well. They would be very uh, 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 happy, ha uh, very happy in Derry. So I'm not being cynical, but once bitten, twice shy, bitten over and over again, deeply cynical. I recall the fact that we've recently closed the law school at McGee which we have been promised for years and which opened eight years ago, it's now gone. So I'm a wee bit cynical when we talk about it. I believe it when we see it. I want to see it. I encourage everybody to keep uh, working on it. But if this doesn't work out, Mr Speaker, we'll have to look elsewhere for an expanded third education institution in Derry, whether it's transatlantic, cross-border, social enterprise or whatever. If the University of Ulster doesn't deliver, that doesn't mean that the campaign is going to go away. This, too, is a legacy issue part of the legacy of sectarian discrimination against Derry under the old Stormont Parliament. It's a legacy issue which has to be remedied the same as all the others. Let's do it. And as I say, if this pledge doesn't work out, the game isn't over. I call the Minister of Health, Michelle O'Neill, to respond, and the Minister has up to 15 minutes. Minister. Gorham, I've got a can call you, and can I um, start by welcoming the debate that we've had today and thank members for their contributions throughout the course of the debate, particularly their contributions in relation to the positive impact which the health and social care staff provide day and daily throughout the course of their work. Um, all, all the members of the House realise that our health care system must change so that it can meet the challenges we face in the future. There is also a desire to engage creatively and positively in addressing those challenges. That is the correct approach. As I have explained in Health and Wellbeing 2026 Delivering Together, which sets out my vision for the transformation of health and social care, that we all have a responsibility to work together to ensure that we develop a system that delivers better health outcomes for people and which is sustainable for the future. Accordingly, I view the comments registered in the Chamber today and indeed the proposal for a medical school in the North West as positive. At the outset, I want to again pay tribute to the dedication and the commitment of all of our frontline staff who play a vital role in the delivery of high quality care to our population across all sectors and across all settings. I cannot stress enough how greatly I value the, and appreciate the work that our medical staff do in the face of increased demands and the unique contribution which they make to the lives of patients, clients and families on a daily basis. The underlying issue that this proposal for a medical school seeks to address is the need to ensure a sustainable supply of well-trained doctors to serve the pri in primary care and in secondary care, particularly in the northwest of this island. I share the concern expressed by members today regarding the challenge of medical recruitment for these services. 
I wish to assure the Chamber of my commitment to resolve and address these issues. I fully recognise the current challenges which we have in attracting junior doctors to fill all the medical training positions we currently have available across the North. It's indeed troubling that medical graduates from Queen's University are not taking up all of the 267 foundation posts which we have available to fill. Furthermore, and increasingly, foundation doctors are not progressing into specialty training programs. For example, in 2015, only 150 out of our output of 250 foundation doctors entered specialty training. The reasons for this noticeable trend, which is by no means unique to here, are multifactorial and will require persistence if we're going to address them. I consider that effective workforce engagement and planning are key enablers to securing the needed transformation of our health and social care. My department is working closely with the North Medical and Dental Training Agency to ensure that all medical trainees across the HSC are valued and supported appropriately and they are provided with up-to-date, high-quality medical training. I know that this is being reinforced by action by local media or medical management and the individual employer and trusts. The key will be to make HSE an employer of choice, and I am committed to ensuring that a workforce strategy to give substance to this objective is developed by May of next year. I also support the work of officials from the Department and the Health and Social Care Board in close liaison with local GPs to ensure that people living in South East Fermanagh will continue to have access to high quality, sustainable and resilient GP services. The motion before us today raises the specific question whether an, initial, an additional medical school in the North West could help with the current vacancies in junior doctor positions and the challenges of recruiting to GP practices in some of our deeper rural localities. I think a medical school in the North West has the potential to do so. For example, it is noticeable, if not exceptional, for healthcare systems across these islands that about 80% of medical students graduating in the North go on to pursue their careers in the HSE here. This testifies to the value of medical careers offered. However, it perhaps also demonstrates that there is a desire among many of our young people to serve the local communities in which they have grown up and with whom they have deep roots, deep roots and empathy. A North West Medical School, again, has the potential to tap into this. That said, the next generation is likely to be the most mobile workforce yet. The highly regarded doctors we train here will be in much demand, in particular across the English-speaking world. This requires us to engage purposefully with our future medical graduates to ensure we harness their skills for the benefit of the HSC in the future. Notwithstanding the real potential a North West Medical College presents, this proposal is at an early stage and it will take time to develop. The strategic outline case submitted by the, by the University of Ulster is a first, an early attempt to assess the financial implications from my department. This proposal explains, but by no means all of the investment that a completely new school would require. Initial predictions of capital costs for the Department of the Economy are in the region of 20 million. The annual revenue pressure for my department is placed at around 17 million. However, this assessment needs to be reviewed rigorously. Much further work will be required to understand both the extent of the future medical workforce need and the likely costs, including additional costs, which would be incurred in any corresponding expansion of postgraduate training, particularly at foundation level. But my officials will work with the University of Ulster to take forward that analysis and make sure we complete all of that work. Of course, consideration will also have to be given to the challenges associated with establishing and placing onto a sustainable footing a new medical school. We mustn't shy away from these challenges. The recruitment of suitably trained clinical economic staff will be challenging. The regulatory and accountability challenges of setting up training programmes stretching under this proposal across two professional regulatory regimes should also be recognised and will take time to work through. However, I believe we can overcome such challenges. There is a lot of potential that could be realised for the people of the North West and I'm committed to working with the University and the Department of the Economy and other departments in relation to taking it forward. Mr Speaker. Yes. Okay. I thank the member and, and can I welcome the very positive remarks uh, that she has made in relation to the North West, but could I also just encourage her today to really take note of the issues that are uh, unfolding within the Portadown area. I know I'm maybe stretching this, but I really feel it's imperative that you as Minister recognise the, the, the great need that exists there and that that's addressed as well within the, the overall uh, health reform. I thank the member for um, intervention and um, you may be stretching it but all politics is local so yourself and Joanne Dobson have also raised the, the, the issue and I, I can assure you that I'm acutely aware of the issues that are unfolding and ported down and I've, and I've actually just asked for an update this morning in relation to 
what all is being done. There are obviously locums in place, but I think we just need to obviously get to a stage where we have a sustainable health service there and people feel confident in it. So um, I can assure you that we're doing everything that we can. Can Corley, I hope that it's evident from the comments that I've made um, that I do see considerable potential in the North West Medical School. It's an issue that I would like to see explored further. And as I've outlined um, above in my contribution that um, there are a number of issues that we need to be considered uh, in, in time ahead as a way of advancing the proposals further. Central to the consideration of this important issue is my transformation agenda. And last month I launched my vision for a transformation of health and social care. And we're about to embark on an ambitious transformation journey which will radically change the way we plan and deliver health and social care. As I've said before, under this transformation process, I am committed to investing in the workforce of the HSE. Our staff are the greatest asset, and I recognize that they are under pressure. I have witnessed over the last number of months the outstanding work of all of the staff, not least our medical staff, and the positive impact they have on people's lives. The compassion and dedication for our staff, of our staff continues to astound me. I'm therefore committed to developing a workforce strategy early in 2017 and a range of other immediate actions to start to address some critical workforce challenges. There will be a new approach to learning and to team working, and I want all those working in health and social care to feel able to affect change and improvement in care rather than concentrating power at the top. We need greater collective clinical and professional leadership throughout the HSE, supported by skilled and able managers. And that is why I've asked my officials to also develop a system-wide HSC leadership strategy to, produce by, to be produced by next summer. And resources will be invested to support staff and leaders to develop the necessary skills and behaviours that will be crucial as we move forward. I anticipate that this transformation process will lead to a revision of the structure of services across the north and development of regional programmes of care, which will deliver better outcomes for individuals. These are significant factors which we will need to consider carefully when assessing future medical workforce needs, the associated medical education requirements and how best we're going to deliver them. So Ken Corley, in conclusion, I welcome the concept of a North West Medical School. I very much welcome this opportunity to focus attention on our undergraduate medical provision. I am committed to exploring the feasibility of this proposal and ensuring that we train the right number of future doctors to meet the needs of a transformed health and social care system that delivers better outcomes for all of our population. I call Mr. Colin Meastwood to wind up the debate on the motion, and the member will have up to 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll try not to wind it up too much. Um, very grateful for the support from around the chamber uh, for our, our motion. Our motion uh, does say that we note uh, the support of both the Minister for the Economy and the Minister for Health. Uh, this wasn't about political points, and this is about putting a very important issue. Uh, on uh, the agenda and I am again going to say that I very much welcome uh, the support from the Minister uh, today. This is a hugely important issue. It isn't uh, one that we want to play football with or political football or whatever way uh, you want to call it. Um, it is unfortunate that a couple of members decided to drag this down. One minute the, 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 the opposition is being too negative uh, and then uh, we're coming up with a very positive uh, motion which actually names uh, one of the people who called us too negative uh, names his own uh, minister and singles him out for praise, uh, and then that's not good enough either. I'm not sure what we have to do, uh, Mr. Speaker, but what we will continue to do is raise the issues uh, that are important to our constituents. Um, Mr. Middleton was at a meeting, unfortunately I couldn't make it, but my colleague Mr. Durkin was there last week when the University of Ulster uh, said they were delighted at the fact that this motion was coming before the House, and I think people are happy that we're uh, addressing these issues. I don't want to get into the issue of who said what first, but Mr. McCann's right. <laughs> it was uh, John Hume who, who, who first proposed uh, this issue. But regardless of all of that, that was 25 years ago, Mr. Speaker. We're still here. We still don't have a medical school, and we still have a chronic underfunding of our university sector, and in particular, uh, McGee University. Uh, Mr. Mr. Durkin well outlined uh, the case for a medical school uh, at McGee. Uh, it is absolutely clear that it is, isn't sustainable uh, for the Western Trust to continue uh, to fund locums at the value in which we're doing it. Uh, I think this year it will be up to £16 million uh, the Western Trust will spend on locums. It's a fairly simple argument to make, in my view, that we could save an enormous amount of money whilst helping the economy by investing in a graduate school 
uh, Graduate Medical School uh, at McGee. If, and I think Mr. McCartney made this point, it's a point I've made many times. If someone goes to a university, uh, it is very, very likely that they will stay within 20 miles of that university. They'll settle down and stay. In fact, it's 80 per cent of people do that. 80 per cent of people who leave Derry or Belfast uh, and go to Manchester or Liverpool end up living within 20 miles of that area. It is obvious. We can all understand how that works. People settle down, get a job and stay there. We're losing that to our economy. We're losing uh, over 50 per cent of our young people. Or, or over 30 per cent, sorry, Mr. Speaker, of our young people who are going to university at age 18, heading away out of Northern Ireland, uh, and we're losing that to our economy, we're losing that to our society, and we're losing that uh, to our families. I don't think that's uh, a way that we should order our society. If we're serious about turning around our economy, and many parts of our economy do need to be turned around, in particular places within my own uh, constituency, if we're serious about doing that, we can't just rely on one fiscal lever. If we think uh, that corporation tax is going to solve all our problems and not investing and continuing to, to, continuing to disinvest in our university sector is going to solve all our problems, then we're barking up uh, the wrong tree, Mr. Speaker. I, I have figures uh, in front of me, Mr. Speaker, from uh, the HSE in the South. Uh, there's going to be a predicted shortage of GPs uh, in the 26 counties of between 493 and 1,380 GPs. Uh, why, can't we, why can we not address that shortage by training people in Derry? Many people uh, across this chamber have said that we have a GP shortage here. We know that. We have a huge GP shortage right across this island. This is a fantastic opportunity, and I know that the university are already doing this. They are already working, as Mr Durkin said, with people in Galway and people in Limerick to try to make this a cross-border entity. Why not, uh, why not meet the need that we have right across this island uh, for GPs? I think Derry would be the ideal place uh, to do that. We can't have a discussion, Mr uh, Speaker, about any kind of investment at McGee without recognising, as Mr McCann has, that this has been a 50-year struggle and we haven't been very successful at uh, meeting the promise that was asked for by those people who marched to this place um, over 50 years ago. Over 50 years ago, Mr Speaker. And this isn't about us complaining about something that happened 50 years ago. This is about us being outraged that it hasn't been resolved. And I. I, I note what some, some people might say about, uh, about this being about local interest. Well, it is about local interest, Mr. Speaker. But there was nobody in South Belfast jumping up and down when Queens got places that they didn't even ask for. Nobody talked about local interest then. It is about local interest. But I will, every single day, and others in this chamber will do the same, fight for the local interest that has been denied to people in my constituency and people west uh, of the ban. It has been a disgrace that we still don't have a decent road to Derry, a decent road from Dublin to Derry, or a decent university at the right size, 10,000 uh, places for Derry. It is a disgrace that that still hasn't happened. And we welcome any support that we can get around this chamber for that. But we won't be distracted by people telling us it's about a little local interest. This is much, much bigger than that. This is about writing an historic wrong, Mr Speaker, and it should have been right, righted many, many years ago. So anything that we can do to support uh, Ulster University and the work that Professor McKenna is doing to bring forward this proposal, we will. But let me be clear, and Mr McKenna asked uh, about the commitment to 10,000. We're still committed to 10,000 places. I hope other people are as well. And this will be a fantastic addition if we can get this through. But that's all it is, Mr. Speaker. We are not giving up on the, uh, on the campaign to finally and once and for all fund a decent sized university uh, at McGee and Derry because people in Derry will not accept anything less. Thank you. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The eyes have it. The eyes have it.